You're all broke and it's your parents' fault. Guys, we're going to be talking about why it's your parents' fault for the reason why you're broke. Everything you've heard about money, everything growing up in school, your uncles, your aunts, everybody. Everything you've heard growing up your whole life is all a lie about money. And there's a reason why the 1% control all the money in the world. And all of you guys are still broke. Kirby, explain why they're broke. Alex, that was a that was a good intro. I'm glad to see you're more animated. I feel <laughs> like I feel. Uh, but yeah, but it's it's a simple quagmire that everybody's in. Everybody, and I'm not saying they don't, but everybody believes their parents love them, the grandma, granddaddy, and the drunk uncle love them. But the truth is, they love you enough to tell you the lies, and they don't tell you the truth about the stuff that they don't know. So they make up stuff, and then of course. You believe it because you figure they love you, so they're going to tell you, they're only going to tell you the truth. But the, the truth of it is, they don't know. Only thing you got to do is think about it. If you're broke and all, all the knowledge you have about finance or money in general, it came from people that was broke also. So if they were so knowledgeable about money or what to do with money, they will at least have some, right? It goes back to that thing we say question information received, but nobody's questioning the damn thing. Everybody's just believing in this fairy tale that, oh, my grandma, my mom, my dad, they they know what's right. They know what to do, but they just didn't do it. If they knew it was something that worked, then they would do it. So Alex, just taking a quick jump and change up on things. So what were some of the things that you was taught at a younger age that you realize, I mean, I don't care from who, that you realize they full of crap as you got older. The biggest thing that I was taught, I think the focal point would be like, save your money. And I think that one is such a huge concept, even to the point where I think people listening to this video right now, me saying save your money is bullshit. I think they would question like, oh, how is it bullshit? Like they would think that I sound crazy saying that, but you know, it's because as we've taught on this channel, as many other channels talk about is saving money, it's there's inflation and inflation is an invisible tax. And the more you save. I want to say the more you save, but as, if you just keep saving, that money will just basically deteriorate if you're not investing that money. Yeah, and that's that's a great point there, because you can never save. You can't save because you can't beat inflation. But another thing is you can't save your way to wealth. Like I, I literally have relatives to this day that still get paychecks and then put their money up under the mattress. And they're losing money at every instant. I mean, if even if it's sitting in one of these, you know, if you had one of the big banks, you know, you know what the name of the big banks are, and you're in one of their savings accounts, hell, if you're in one of their CDs, it's better than this being in straight cash under your mattress, but you can't save your way to wealth. It's, you're not going to save up enough to have a big nest egg. Now, of course, if you know you got a, a director, executive position high up in a big Fortune 500 company, and you can stow away a hundred thousand dollars a year, which most of them can't. Just FYI, but if you can store away a hundred thousand dollars a year, you'll get to a million. But but their lifestyle still wouldn't be able to keep up with the money that they save. If you're not putting money away in other vehicles that grows in compounds higher than the rate of inflation, then you're just wasting your time out here and just going through the cycles of life. Because truth be told is everybody who said save, I mean, look at grandmas, grand granddads and stuff like that that's getting older and they're getting into the retirement age. They're all, and you know, everybody's big adage is, oh, I want to retire and travel just think about it how many people did you know and you i know you probably had a lot of aunts, uncles and things like that and that's up there into the retirement age that's actually leaving to go travel when they retire because they said save money save money gets you nowhere especially in this hyperinflation life but alex i'm gonna come back to the subject in a second but i'm gonna let you go back with another topic about uh stuff that you learned growing up that yeah, was just total bullcrap. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's 
I would say it's not even so much as stuff like financial information I learned, but like advice or life information I was given growing up that was correlated or related to money. Right. For example, always help those in need. But then, and I mean, really, I learned this from you. And it's not that Kirby's an asshole. He just points out the BS in people. <laughs> And so it wasn't until meeting you that I really started to have like an eye opener and question like, wait a minute. I always heard growing up, you know, people ask you for money, be nice, help them, give them money. But then now I'm starting to see like, okay, yeah, I understand I make more, but I make more because I put in more sacrifices. I did more work. So why should I feel obligated to help those that don't want to do the same for themselves? Why am I held responsible to helping those that are that by society are called the the needy, those in need, when in reality they have the same capabilities and opportunities as I do to achieve what I've achieved. And so just giving out money without questioning the information, questioning why do they actually need the money? Just simply handing it out blindly is not gonna have is not gonna be an option anymore in my life. I mean, and so it wasn't until then because as I started to make a little bit more income, you know, working harder and working harder, making more money, I noticed that I would have friends, family always asking me for money. And it was a setback because they asked pretty freaking often for money it's not like they just ask like once a year it's like oh now i understand i can go to alex and ask him for money whenever i i'm in need and so i got that a lot and it would be like asking me for two hundred dollars four hundred dollars and i'm like i'm not making hundreds of thousands a month or tens of thousands a month like i'm only making a few thousand and that would add up pretty quick. Like if I keep getting asked for this money, it's going to be a setback. And so, it, you know, it came to the point of telling of blocking them off and telling them no, you know, in order for me to use the money that I was told I needed to give to these kinds of people to grow myself. And that's one thing I, I don't think people comprehend. I think people put too much emotion in that too much, like, feel good of oh you have to you have to be nice you have to be big hearted you know when not realizing that that just the only person that it's actually helping is them and it's hurting you the whole time your whole and I see that a lot with family is they want to give out money all the time and they can never get to the point in life that they want to get to because they can't say no I like I like this one and just think about it they say help the people that you need the people that you're talking about actually call you, call you. And they probably calling you on like one of those iPhone 25s or something like that. So they, they ain't that damn much need. You right. know what I mean? So, but th this is the key point to it. They call you because they know you have the fun. Because they know you're doing something that they're not willing to do. But instead of doing, doing what you're doing to create their own funds, it's simpler to them just to, hey, Alex, they're really not needy. They're really just lazy. They really don't want to put in the sacrifices that you put in the sacrifices for. So they can call you an asshole. They can call you whatever. I mean, some people just can't deal with that emotional troll of, oh, my family's talking about me. I really don't give a damn. My family and friends. But just think about it. If their family and friends, if they love you like they say they love Jesus, People don't listen to Jesus. <laughs> they don't even listen to Jesus. So who are you? You know what I mean? So that's what I'm saying. This this fake love, if, the, if it was really love, if it was really, hey, I see this person doing something, just think about it. You're on your fifth rental, fifth rental, I mean, fifth property combined, right? Fifth, You're on your fifth, fifth property combined. Yeah. How many people that you know that's bought a house in the past, let's say, year and a half. They know you at five. They have none. How many called you in action? What should you do? Ask me for advice? Yeah. None. For advice, none. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. 
because they don't want they they when they go buy a house they want it all to be emotional no i want to do what i want to do i don't care about the right way i just want what i want but then when they go buy a house that they pay overpriced for when they really can't afford it but since the bank gave them the money to buy it they think they can afford it and then everything goes down the drain they wouldn't call you to acquire the property acquire the property excuse me but they're going to call you when they can't pay that mortgage no more. They're going to call you when the light bills do. they even going to call you and say, hey, Alan, I can't afford this house. Why don't you just buy this house from me and I'll rent it back to you? And you rent it back to me. You see? And, and I'm saying it's not saying that this is what people say in Alex. This is stuff that comes to me all the time. But Alex, it will come to you. It comes to me. Yeah, I, I mean, I really get right. people telling me, you know, why don't you buy a house and rent it out to me because I, I can't find the home I want. Yeah, exactly. So, so you take, or you make all the sacrifices, you take on all the risk, and then, well, when, well, when I don't pay you, the only thing I you can go do is just evict me, and I'll just go find somebody else, somewhere else, or somebody else to scam upon. That's the reason. Family ties, family history. I only say, and Alex, you know this is my word, question information. You you don't you don't go to you don't go to the homeless shelter asking somebody to teach you how to play basketball. I'm not saying there's people that's in a homeless shelter that can't, but you don't go to you don't go to McDonald's asking them to teach you how to be a chef. Right? So you don't go to broke people asking them how to make money. I mean, when you, you know, you're, you know, 11, 12 years old, you got to do whatever your parents say. You got to follow along with whatever they got going on. But it's so many apparatuses and so many platforms that you can use, books, videos. Find people that actually have money if you want it and do what they do. Be willing to make the sacrifices that they're willing to make. Because if not, you're going to be screwed. But with all that being said, this video going a little bit too long. Alex, we're going to come back on another video about this sometime in the future. But please like and subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, comment. Uh, tell Alex how he's such a mean person because he won't help his family. And we'll see you in the next video. <laughs> see you guys.